Okay, good afternoon, participants. Welcome back to second session of online training course for Appendix 3 aspirants. Today's topic is rate incentives. The speaker is Sri B.D. Christopher, Deputy CCM, South Central Railway. Welcome, sir, and it's over to you to come in the session. Yeah, <coughs> thank you. Thank you, Irfan, for organizing this. Um, so, before that, uh, I'd just like to uh, tell you the importance of uh, the freight incentive schemes. Uh, as you're all aware that uh, the freight is a major aspect of uh, the bread for Indian railways. So about, we are earning about 65 to 70% is freight and remaining 25-30% is from the passenger, other coaching and sundry earnings. So this is the importance of uh, freight. So whatever uh, subsidy, we are cross subsidizing the uh, coaching aspect from the freight. Uh, okay, somebody is saying uh, Hindi, mein bata ye, sir. I'm not sure because uh, Hindi, if everybody is comfortable, normally we are telling in English only. Uh, if you want to tell me Hindi, I'm not uh, so comfortable in Hindi. So I can clear doubts in Hindi if you want at the end of the session. Uh, I think that will be good. So that everybody can, uh, South people cannot understand Hindi properly. And uh, it's, it's better we have uh, uh, in English. Then later on, any doubts, any other material matter if you want, we can discuss in Hindi. That I can clear in Hindi. Fine. So this is about the uh, freight aspect. As I told you, 65 to 70% is the freight earnings. and. 25 to 30% is the passenger earnings and we are cross subsidizing the passenger aspect from the freight. That's a, that's a reason why the operating ratio is very high. So we are paying more towards pension and other aspects uh, and towards expenditure. Our earning is uh, very important. So we are basically our uh, earning, uh, we are borrowing a lot of funds from the other, uh, uh, other sources. Uh, so, when compared to, even though India is standing fourth and fifth and uh, uh, the whole other railways all over the world, uh, still uh, our passenger earning is very less uh, per kilometer per paisa per kilometer per ratio. Our freight is uh, very good, uh, but we are now over, we are having more rates than what the market can bear. So, we can only uh, uh, have some incentives so that we can uh, give it uh, to the customer uh, at a very reasonable rate. So the customer will come back to railways. As you're all aware that during 1930 to 31, our railway share almost was on the transportation uh, rail share was almost 70 to 80% and uh, the road was only 20, 30%. Now, as of now, the railway share is only 25%. Uh, so we are going very, very badly. The road has improved a lot. So we are losing our freight. We are losing our earning to road. And uh, you can understand the recent uh, development of uh, six lane uh, highways by the Honorable Minister for Roads and the introduction of GST wherein uh, the toll gates are, uh, uh, are giving. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to introduction so that uh, the road rates have increased a lot. So this is about uh, the importance of right. The idea behind me saying is this, that everybody of us should contribute that we should give our own ideas. We should try to uh, plug the loopholes and we should try to improve the freight revenue. So increase in the rates will further divert the traffic to rate, to roll, to road. So within the present, because our rates are always are already very high when compared to the world rates and the freight rates on Indian railways are very high. So freight rates will further divert the present traffic also to road. Uh, so recently, because of the hike in petrol rights, some traffic is coming to us. 
but that is not idea the so we should try to incentivize the customers so that the customers will come to rail so that's very important that we incentivize them and i am going to explain to you from the examination point of view and from the general point of view that how important it is that right incentive scheme should be available to the customer and that is the reason why railway board in last 2 to 3 years have announced a lot of incentive schemes uh, which uh, have been uh, very much welcomed by the customers uh, so they are trying to utilize this incentive schemes and we are able we are we have formed the business development units also wherein the uh, bdus in division and zonal railways are sending new proposals to railway board and uh, based on the proposals from zonal railway railway board is issuing a policy circulars like the new incentive schemes the round trip tariff concession which was introduced recently was the south central railways initiative and many railways have sent uh, many ideas uh, so that the board has issued a lot of freight incentive circulars based on the feedback from the divisions oblic zones and from the customers so for the examination point of view i am to explain but you should all be aware about the uh, general aspect of the freight and the incentives we are offering to the customer basically the country is now to uh, to improve the economic activity the railway being a very important uh, transporter has a very big role to play to move the freight so relaxation is provided by slew of incentives business development units have been set up at board level zonal level and regional level so board level what they do formulate policy and approve proposals for zonal railways zonal railway retain the existing traffic and create board volumes at division level create and promote business through interacting the business entities and market so i'm not just going in depth of it because bdu itself is a separate subject just to give an idea how we are trying to improve the freight earnings and how we are we are trying to get a new incentive schemes through this bdus so bdus are at three levels now at the board level at the zonal level and at the division level so before going to that just i want to just give a brief outline of a birds eye view of from where does the indian railways money come so as i told you the most of the earnings is i have just taken 21 20 21 because 21 22 we have pandemic so about freight from freight is a major aspect about 1 lakh 17 thousand crores we have received from the freight and next is passengers 15248 so you see 1 lakh 17 50000 very less so 2021 we have from passenger we got 15248 crores only and from sunday and it's 5939 crores and from luggage parcel other coaching we got 2097 crores so the summary i'm just showing you 65% is from the freight 28% is from the passenger 4% is from the sundry third 3% is from the other coaching remaining of mistakes so basically we have to concentrate on freight so this is the major bread and butter for us so this is the following these are the freight incentive so coming back to freight incentive schemes because if i'm going to explain to you what is freight and what is uh, not that is not uh, the today's subject uh, today's subject basically is about the freight incentive schemes so these three are very important these three are the major freight incentive schemes one is the traditional mp flow direction that is concession of 20 and 15% loading of bag consignment in open and flat wagons for cement we are giving 30% concession fly ash we are giving 40% freight forward scheme this private forward scheme also i'm going to explain but it's not much important not many zonal railways are having this scheme but traditional empty flow direction and loading of bag consignment in open wagons they are giving a revenue so traditional empty flow direction is a very important that is called tefd so what is tefd so tefd board has board wide commercial rate circular number 13 of 2021 i will issue circular because this circular has been is going on extending so the latest circular is valid up to 313 22 and what is the intention of this empty flow direction this traditional empty flow direction is nothing but the uh, as you all know that any cement factory or any factory for uh, for instance how will have the transportation lease in place so for example any big company like altratech or my home cements or anything on uh, indian railways 
um, or Indian Cement Limited. So they have the transportation lease contract in place so that the commodity that is produced from the factory is taken to the destination for sale. So for that, they either engage lorries or they take, they take it by train. So when they engage lorries, the lorries come to the factory, they get it, they get loaded and they go to the destination, they deliver there, but while returning back, they don't come empty because the contract will not be viable. And while coming back, they get some kind of commodity so that the contract will be viable for the customer as well as for the transporter also. So in this case, railway Railway wagons are going very good. Railway wagons are going, taking the loaded commodity. While we're returning, what is happening? They are all coming empty. So what is, as a result, what is happening is the empty run ratio is increasing. So loaded direction, we're setting five. But we're coming empty, it is an additional expenditure to railways. So railways thought why we should incur additional expenditure and we should try to reduce the empty run ratio and to gather additional revenue. So coming back in empty direction will give additional revenue to the railways. So for on, on that principle, this traditional empty flow direction policy was introduced in that the aim is to run, to, to reduce the empty return ratio and to get additional revenue to railways. So what is this scheme? This scheme is an automatic rebate through computerized force system. So we don't have anything manually, we don't give anything. Uh, just excuse me, uh, system size so coming. Just so, good afternoon, sir. LWS LS of yes, 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 sir. Uh, 30 minutes of agenda. Well, LWS on LS of you, sir. 12 LWS, 1 LSFT also. Yes. 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 Alter take code, Chase. Ah, what are you saying, sir? Ah, yes. Upgrade, yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, so that is about the automatic uh, uh, rebate through computerized FOI system. So this is about the uh, rebate through FOI system. The system will automatically give rebate online. So it will come to the customer directly. So what is this uh, scheme is all about? Notified streams on TFV will be placed on the flow of empties between divisions in case of intrazonal traffic and in between divisions to other zones in case of interzonal traffic. So in case of intrazonal, that is a stream will be notified that from some south center, from Secretariat division to Vijayawad division, this stream when empties move from Secretariat to Vijayawad division, that, that will be eligible for this empty flow concession. Or from one, from one zone to other zone, from say South Central Railway to Southeastern Railway, if, it, if that is zone is notified as empty flow stream, then when the track is booked from South Central to Southeastern, then that particular stream qualifies for this concession. So the, these streams are notified. That will be based on the, I'm going to tell you, traffic under TFD can move from end to end or from any terminal of the original division of empty flow stream or to any intermediate in the direction of empty, empty flow stream. So traffic under this scheme can be booked from end to end. It can book from end from one end to other end or from any terminal of the original division. So in between the original division from any terminal can book or to any intermediate terminal in the direction of the empty flow service. To an, even to the intermediate terminal, not necessarily to the destination station, destination division, it can be also moved to the, any intermediate terminal also, then also the party, the customer will get concession. Permitted wagons. So what are the wagons permitted in this? In case of open wagons, box and pure boast, all these are permitted. Open wagons, box and group and pure boast groups. In case of covered, BCN and BCNHL groups. In case of flat wagons and mixed steel rigs, BRN group, Bose group, and Concord group. So these are the open wagons, covered wagons, flat wagons, and mixed steel rigs. These are wagons under which these are permitted wagons for the eligibility of this TEFD scheme. 
So the concession under TFD is interzonal and interzonal. So both the interzonal means from one zone to other zone. Intrazonal is from one division to other division. The percentage of concession under TFD, 20% or 15% of entire applicable class rate subject to tone of victim, entire of class 100. So what is the percentage of concession TFD? 20% or 15%. So that you should blindly remember. So what is a, suppose they ask you a question in examination, objective. So what is the percentage of concession of TFD? You can remember that it can be 20% or 15%. But it should not be less than class 100. But not all commodities are permitted. Some commodities are restricted, like iron ore, coal and coke, chemical manures, peeve oil, RMC, military traffic, commodities under class 100, NEA, and less than LR1. So these are all the commodities, iron ore, coal, chemical manures, peeve oil, RMC, military traffic, commodities, class 100, NEA, and less than LR1, they are not eligible for this TFD. And, and also the short lead traffic of less than or equal to 100 kilometers shall not be eligible under the scheme. So this, this is also a possible question in your objective that there is a distance, if, if traffic is booked for less than 200 kilometers, they're not eligible for TFD. So short lead traffic of less than 100, less than or equal to 100 kilometers shall not be equal to, shall not be eligible for the scheme. So what is the minimum offer of traffic? Half, half rate of BCN, BCNA shall be 10, BCNH also 10, box and group is 29. So this is the minimum number of wagons they should offer for availing this TFD scheme. Traffic booked under this scheme shall not be rebooked, diverted or given short of delivery of destination. So this is a very important item. We please remember this. Traffic booked under this scheme shall not be rebooked, diverted or given short of delivery of destination. So whenever you go for installation inspection also, you have to see this traffic booked under this TFD scheme should not be Rebook diverted or given short of delirium destination. So this is also a possible question on in your examination. So that is about TFD. So basically, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, trying to summarize what is TFD. So TFD is nothing but a traffic, a concession offered in the spy system itself for the traffic moving in the empty flow direction. So whenever traffic is moving in the empty flow direction, for the to get us to, for our railways to get us additional revenue, we are giving some concession. For the customer to avail this, he has been given a concession of 20% or 15% whenever he is loaded, when he's loading in the empty flow direction. So, what is empty flow direction? These are notified by zonal railways, wherein from particular stream, from particular zone or particular division to particular division, X division to Y division, if it is loaded in that particular stream then a concession pay is offered automatically in the POI system and the concession is given across the RR. So customer need not apply again. And there is some instead of commodities, not all commodities are eligible. Some commodities like iron ore, coal, chemical manures, peeve oil, military traffic and class less than class 100, they are not eligible. And there is a lead of restriction a lead restriction should not be and lead short lead like short traffic and it should not be less than 100 kilometers or equal to 100 kilometers. If they are loading less than 100 kilometers, then they are not eligible for this TFD concession. And minimum offer of wagons is 10 for BCNH, 10 for BCNHL and 29 for box NL. And whenever this traffic on the TFD, that should not be rebooked, diverted or delivered short of destination. So these are all the important points. Please remember this from the examination point of view. So coming to freight incentives of loading bagged consignment in open and flat wagons. So what, what, why this is, why this, why this is kind of concession for entry railway bodies? So we are, we are finding shortage of jumbo rakes. Jumbo rakes means covered wagons, the BCN, BCNA, BCN HL. So these rakes are shortage, but we have a lot of market. The cement industry now is flush with a lot of cement. So, but we are not able to capture this market because we are running short of wagons. So railway as what he has done is they are offering one type of concession that is loading of bad consignment in open and flat wagons. Suppose a customer, a cement customer wants to load bad consignment, not in open wagons, but is ready to load in flat wagons and or open wagons like box and wagons. 
then they are offered this concession because we have sufficient availability of boxer and flat wagons. So in order to not to lose this traffic by road, so bagged consignments when they are loaded in open or flat wagons, concession certain concession is given. So what are the what is the concession? If you load cement, china clay, chemical manures, food grains, de oil clock, etc., 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 all this all this bagged consignment. When you load, when the customer loads on the open wagons or in the flat wagons, 20% straight away concession is offered to them. When they load fly ash or urea on open wagons or flat wagons, 30% concession is given. So fly ash, urea, 30% concession. Cement and china, clay, chemical manures, 20% concession. So this is a freight incentive scheme for loading bagged consignments in open and flat wagons. So the minimum charge on freight should not be less than LR1. That is a common. So what are the permitted terminals? All terminals, including ports, are permitted, and lead should not be less than or equal to 100 kilometers. And apart from this, the customer can also avail 6% concession to load when he is loading to northeastern states. But some conditions are there. What are the conditions? The commodity should be only loaded in standard bags up to a maximum 100 kgs. Number one, tarpaulins, if any, for covering the wagon should be provided by concern at its own cost. So when he's loading in open wagons, because open wagons, there's a possibility of rain damage is there. So the tarpaulin should be provided by concern himself at its own cost. Concern will be required to furnish an undertaking on the following note, giving their consent to loading in open wagons and the effect they would be where full risk for damage for proliferation. So they should also give an undertaking that they are going to take responsibility if there is any proliferation, any damage to the consignment. They should give undertaking, so they should not put any claim. So supply of wagons of loading under this scheme will be subject to operation feasibility. Again, we are not going to guarantee you the supply of wagons. Based on the operational feasibility, the supply of wagons will be done. So these are the five, four conditions under which this concession is extended. So we should, we should, we should blindly remember 20% concession of cement, uh, other food grains and other bad consignments, 30% for fly ash. So you should remember this. Again, fly ash coming to fly ash, this, if they open, if, if again, a railway board, again, in, in 2020, they have given further discount. Like if they are loading in bagged, bagged or bulk or loose, 40% concession is applicable. Not in of 30%, now 40% concession is applicable if they load in bagged or bulk or loose. 40%. Flat wagons, if, if the bagged flat wagons are loaded in, uh, if, uh, load in flat wagons, 40% concession. If the bagged consignment is loaded in covered wagons, it will be charged just yes, LR1 class. So this is the case of bagged fly ash. So bagged fly ash, 40% concession, whether it is bagged or bulk, if they load in open and flat wagons, then they are eligible for concession of 40%. So whatever, so most of the customers, they are take, taking big, big bags and they're loading in this box and wagons. So they're getting 40% concession straight away. So 20% concession, for the cement, for the bagged consignment like cement, like your uh, uh, food grains, cement, and uh, uh, other uh, things, uh, fertilizers, etc., and 40% concession for fly ash. In case of loading of fly loose fly ash, customer must ensure hydrating the fly ash and covering the wagons with tarpaulin. Suppose if customer instead of putting in the bags, he wants to load fl uh, loose fly ash. Then you should ensure that this fly ash has covered and is watered properly and the covered the wagons are covered with tarpaulins. Tarpaulins, if any, for covering the fly ash is open wagons, should be also provided to the customer's own bar. The customer will be required to furnish and take a forward note to giving concern loading in open flat wagons, so that they pay the full risk and cost. So, whatever the full risk of damage and cost, the customer should give an undertaking on the forward note that they are going to take the full responsibility. It is permitted in all terminals. So uh, apart from this, the concurrent concessions are like uh, similar eligible for Northeast region. When transport in TFD stream, lower than two NTR should be charged. 
for the purpose of ltd scheme the revenue actually paid to iax should be taken as agfr so this ltd i am going to explain in the coming slides how this is accounted so this uh, this this will be charged as 40% of the entire applicable class rate all for all terminals are permitted and uh, concurrent concession as 6% for northeast region they can also avail this 6% concession apart from the 20 and 40% concession in tfd scheme lower of the two ntr shall be permitted for purpose of ltd scheme the revenue actually paid is taken by agfr so how what is agfr what is that i'm going to explain to the coming slide about the ltd scheme so this is about the freight incentive scheme for loading bag the consignment in open wagons first i explain the loading of tfd in traditional empty flow direction was first explain first uh, incentive scheme now loading of bag consignment in open wagons and now the third incentive scheme is the freight forward scheme so in south central railway we don't have this scheme but in other railways some railways have this scheme this scheme is not that much successful but it is like a cargo aggregation so somebody wants load cement somebody wants load gypsum somebody wants load clinker so all this different uh, cargo aggregation the customer can aggregate the cargo and can form a rack and he can load different commodities in the one rack so this is called freight forwarder so basically suppose a customer is a small customer he does not have that much of rack load of uh, uh, freight with him so what he, he approaches the freight forwarder the freight forwarder approaches the customer and two three wagons from that cement customer and three wagons from customer customer 10 wagons from gypsum customer so he 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 aggregates this uh, this uh, all these commodities and move by a rack from the railways but however these commodities are restricted coal is restricted coke is restricted iron is restricted pivot is restricted container is restricted military is restricted rmc brand gypsum is all restricted traffic further in case of wagons loaded with more than two commodities following shall not be permitted all types of ores and minerals cement wood grain chemical minerals iron and steel so not more than two commodities cannot will not be permitted in case of this combination all types of ores minerals cement wood grain chemical minerals iron in in this when you load this not more than two commodities are permitted so minimum chargeable freight is should not be less than R, lr1 all goods sheds are permitted but a lead restriction is there that is 700 kilometers so what is the what is the benefit is going to get the customer the freight provider so individual wagons loaded with single commodity he can load any number of wagons single commodity no problem train load for each wagon per commodity loaded so there is no problem because all same similar wagons single commodity he'll get train load benefit individual wagons loaded with two commodities suppose i said cement and wood grains are loaded then train load for each wagon for the higher class of two commodities loaded so the higher class of two commodities is is the freight rate train load for rate for each wagon of the higher class of two commodities loaded so whatever the train load benefit is there suppose food grain is there food grain is uh, say 130 class cement is there 140 so 140 class will be the given the that kind of uh, that will charge it will that the whole rate will be charged 140 class that is idea individual wagons loaded with more than two commodities so competitive class rate of one if if is loading more than two commodities a, a standard class rate of 120 is charged so two wagon two commodities the freight rate will be higher of the two commodities loaded for more than two commodities class rate of 120 for single wagon for single rack for single commodity complete train load for that commodity so this single commodity there is no problem for two commodities higher of the two commodities class rate for more than two commodities class 120 and apart from that concurrent freight concession of 6% is a normal whenever it loads loads north east and states freight percent 6% concession is given so this is about the freight forward scheme so i told you about the freight forwarders i told you about the traditional empty flow direction i told you about the scheme of 
loading, bank management in open markets. So these three schemes are private incentive schemes. Apart from that, we have many other schemes. I will tell you wagon leasing schemes. So what are the wagon leasing schemes? That is, we have LSFTO, we call this liberalized special freight train operator scheme. That's twelve percent for twenty years. Automobile freight AFTO, automobile freight train operators. Then general purpose wagon investment, ten percent for fifteen years. Then wagon leasing scheme. So these are the schemes now available for wagon leasing customers. So now, as I, as I told you earlier, we were we were sh falling short of wagons. So the wagons. Uh, so they to encourage the customers to load on their own wagons. They can buy their own wagons, or they can load. They can take lease from the other customers, and they can load other customers from the wagon leasing company. So under this LSFTO scheme, so I'm going to explain in the coming slides what is LSFTO. Twelve percent is concession given for twenty years. Remember, please remember this concession aspect. Twelve percent for twenty years. In GPWS, ten percent for five years. AFTO. Concession is defined or elevated based on the origin destination on case to case basis. So, apart from these schemes, other schemes are also concessions. I told you LTTC, long term tariff contract scheme for traffic in both increment retention. So, this long term tariff concession, long term tariff contract scheme, LTTC scheme, even though it is not, it is discontinued now. Only the existing customers on South Central we have about uh, six customers who are having who are having this scheme. And uh, uh, so this LTTC, in which if a, if a customer retains his traffic or gives some incremental traffic more than the benchmark, then he is given certain concession, percentage of concession that under this scheme. And we have another scheme called station to station rate scheme. This is a, this is a very good scheme, station to station rate. The maximum percentage of concession, thirty percent concession is given. Merry go round scheme is there, MGR, in which the track is uh, built by the customer. And we supply the rake, and they move under this from uh, under their own siding, and certain uh, co not concession. We give certain person certain uh, uh, rates. Rate table is given to them, uh, and under that, uh, depending on the number of trips he is operating, he will be given that he will be charged that rate only. Terminal development scheme and very no terminal charges. Terminal charges are aware that uh, the boat when you load from boat shed or from PFT. These terminal charges are levied. That is twenty rupees per ton. So under this scheme, when a customer develops his own terminal development scheme, uh, uh, terminal development term, uh, terminal term, under his own terminal, then under this scheme, no terminal charges will be charged. And E oil engine on load scheme is there. That is for one year. Under this engine and oil, and under this E oil scheme, uh, the customer has to load within the fixed time, but the engine will be always be available on the rake. And uh, so that this freight is a rake will be moved immediately after loading. The engine will not be cut off; it will not be taken back. It will be always available on the rake itself. It will be taken away very quickly. Roll on, roll off scheme. This is also a very good scheme. Let's see, even though it is not available in South Central Railway or Indian Railways, <coughs> we have from Central Railway to Southern Railway or from Central Railway to Southwestern, we have these schemes or roll on, roll off scheme, in which lorry itself is carried by railways. So the lorry itself. Suppose uh, uh, the lorry, the customer loads uh, certain consignment at his company at his factory. Then uh, this is uh, they are covered with tarpaulins. Then lorry is uh, brought to the railway station and is loaded on the flat wagons. And the flat wagons carry to destination. Then again, it is offloaded there. Then again, again, it is taken back to the factory. So that is that's uh, first point. Last call, last call, last call connectivity is ensured under this scheme. We we charge them certain 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 rate of uh, charge freight charges, and the customer need not again uh, unload it, load it, and uh, no multiple handling is not there. The lorry itself will be mounted on the flat wagons and its correct destination, and so that will be easy for, easy for the customer to deliver his consignment. And it's pre FT this twenty rupees per ton as I told you, no terminal charges. If a customer develops his own freight terminal, then twenty rupees per ton is not limit. He return back to the customer. So coming back to station to station rate scheme. So this scheme is, as I told you, that that is issued by Railway Board Circular Number Twenty Six of Two Thousand Sixteen. So customer consent will be granted only in current traffic or under the benchmark. So under this scheme, the customer has to cross the benchmark. That is benchmark NTK, max ten kilometers. So the customer is given certain benchmark, and if he is loading more and above, more and above the 
benchmark then he is given certain of certain amount of concession and that is called sts scheme the sts means station to station that is from one particular station to other particular so from origin from one origin to the other this we call od pair so when a customer loads wants a concession in order to attract the customer in order to give concession to the customer when he offers the traffic from one origin station to other destination of that particular commodity we give them certain concession based on the circumstances ccm com pfa will recommend and gm will approve the amount of concession to be given to the customer so what is the what is the brief main feature of the scheme is all commodities some some commodities are excluded commodities below class 100 are not eligible commodities coal and coke is not eligible iron ore is not eligible military traffic pol and rmc they are not eligible for this sts concession so maximum concession as i told you 30% so on south central we have seven 12 customers clinker 6 slag 4 maize 3 dolomite 1 sugar 1 Later on, better and so all these customers on South Central we have extended the station to station rate scheme. So under this scheme, as I told you, it is applicable to specific stream of traffic for a particular commodity for movement between a specific pair of origin and destination station. So the customers, for example, are from the from South Central Railway, he wants to move from Kakinada Port to South Eastern Railway. He want he to a particular day say. Vishakhapatnam port or some port or some uh, destination on southeastern, he wants to uh, load clinker, for example. So uh, he says that, sir, I want to load uh, 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 about hundred or ten, twenty, thirty rakes from South uh, Kagrana port to the southeastern railway. So I am going to give you hundred rakes to southeastern railway from southeastern railway. You please give me some concession, so so that my traffic, which is moving by road, will come back to railways. so what does the railway do so we we see that whether this particular station agnada station is have, how much he has loaded earlier and we say that take a while last two years you have loaded this much so you have to cross that benchmark so we fix some some benchmark so you have to cross that benchmark if you load more than above the benchmark then you are eligible for concession so this in detail i cannot i need to explain because you will not get all these things examination If if at all some essay question is asked, then fine. I'm sharing this. Uh, I already shared in the chat box. You can use this uh, uh, on the this presentation in the chat box for a for your essay examination. But for the short point, short uh, questions, then only remember that STS concession. What are the customers? What are the commodities which are not eligible for for the STS concession? And uh, and it is eligible from from one destination to the Other destination also, and the maximum concession allowed is thirty percent. And we have a cluster also. So cluster is nothing but a group of stations within one hundred fifty kilometers. Suppose otherwise, if you don't define a cluster, so what does the customer do? Instead of loading from point A, he will bring it to point B and load it, and saying, "Sir, this is a new traffic I'm bringing. You please load from this point B, from station B." But for railways, it's not new traffic because point from Uh, from point A, it was earlier going. Station A, it was already moving earlier. So in order to avail this concession, what does the customer do? He'll bring it to the point uh, station B and say, "They give me concession." So what we have defined, uh, railway board has done is they define that 150 kilometers, whatever the boot sheds are in their range, this in the in the circle of 150 kilometers, all these benchmarks, all these NTKMs, all these rates which were loaded earlier will be the benchmark for the customer to cross. Them. So unless he crosses that benchmark, he is not eligible for that concession. So what is benchmark NTKM? NTKM benchmark NTKM is defined as average NTKMs of corresponding periods of previous 24 months. So the average benchmark of previous 24 months is the benchmark for the last two years. So what is the average? Suppose the last average of two month two years is. Say ten thousand anti games. Anti games are all available. No? Net ten kilometers. So tonnage into kilometers. So what? How much lead he has done? How much tonnage has loaded? That is anti game. So for the last two years, what is the average anti game? We'll fix the benchmark. And after he crosses the benchmark only, he is going to get that concession. <clears throat> so that is about STS. Hope you are clear. So any doubts? It can be clear later on. 
So distance based concession that is clinker. So clinker, what happened? What is happening is clinker was moving in a long lead, long, long distances. So the no, no concession was being given to the customer. So customer, what is he is trying to move by road, even though long lead is there. They are trying to move by road. So certain customers have come to railways. They said, "Sir, we want to load long lead traffic and give us some concession." So that BDU, they would, they would recommended to our zonal uh, zonal BDU, and zonal BDU has written to railway board. We told we told the railway board, "Sir, if you give us concession, if the customer is lo loading more than thousand kilometers, you will 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 fix some uh, benchmark and we'll give them concession." So board has agreed. So board said, "Okay, TK customer." If he's loading for more than twenty thousand uh, kilometers and he is crossing the benchmark, that means he is loading more than the last year. Then that is April twenty one to March twenty two. Then he is eligible for concession. And traffic uh, TFD, but uh, TFD already if the customer is having TFD, then he is not eligible for this long date concession. That is for clinker only. Excuse me, remember that. That is twenty percent concession for clinker, twenty percent concession. So round trip tariff concession. So this uh, round trip tariff, uh, round trip traffic concession, that is called RTT. So this objective is to reduce the empty run to offer traffic in the return direction back to or to either from destination street or from any point within twenty minutes. Unlike TFD, because TFD also is a objective is to reduce empty run, but in this in this case, what we do is we offer concession for the same rate. Suppose a rate. Moves from A to B, and B to C also is coming by the same break is coming from B to C back. Then, when customer loads that from uh, is going from suppose is carrying clinker or gypsum from point A to point B, unloading in the port. Again, that same break instead of coming empty, we are saying that to the customer, "Are Baba, instead of instead of the break coming empty, if you are loading something in into that break, we are giving we want to give you some concession." So that is called round trip. From point A to B and back to A, A B back to A. So that is a round trip concession we are giving try to give to the customer. But also, but within 200 kilometers also is there. Uh, if, if the customer will not be from point A to uh, point B, it can go to point C also. But point B to point C should be within 200 kilometers. Restricted commodities, iron ore, pig oil, military traffic, RMC. So all these commodities are restricted. So, but there is a benchmark. So, monthly average of commodity NTKMs achieved the previous 24 months. So again, the previous 24 months, this every month benchmark is fixed. So, unless he crosses the last average uh, benchmark of the last two years, then only then he is eligible for this concession. But what is the concession is going to get? Suppose outward traffic. I told you, no, this is round trip. A to B, that is outward traffic and return traffic. Suppose outward traffic, he loads commodity class 150. Return traffic, he loads commodity 160. Charging will be class 150 only. It will not be 160. So in the, in the return direction, we are going to charge class 150. Outward traffic 160 class. Suppose gypsum is there, 150 class. Iron ore is there, 160 class. So instead of charging 160 class, return direction will charge only 150 class. That is one. Number two, outward class one fifty, inward class one forty. The charging will be at class one forty. Less the difference between class one fifty and one forty. So remember this. Suppose it is one is going, coming back in higher class. Then the lower class will be charged. Next is going a lower, going class outer class outward traffic is one fifty. Returning is lesser class, one forty. Then what will be charged? Charging will be one forty minus difference between class one forty and one fifty. So return direction we will not charge you one forty, but we'll be charging one forty class and the difference between one forty and one fifty. Suppose outward and inward also both are same, the charge will be done ten percent less than the class return that class. So the outward inward same class ten percent less. So outward uh, I'm going to I'm going to rewind uh, rewind that. Suppose the charging of commodity, if we move higher commodity, if we move lower commodity, get back higher commodity class, then the charge will be lower commodity class, return direction lower commodity class rate. And if we take 
higher commodity getting back lower return direction lower commodity then the charging will be difference between the 150 and 140 class higher and lower 10 percent higher and lower difference between 150 one outward commodity and both and in, inward commodity both same then the charging will be 10 percent less the class for coal and coke coal and coke also are eligible for this concession it is equal to 10 percent of the so 10 percent concession going to give for the coal and coke when on south central four customers we have under rtt so that is about the round trip concession round trip tariff concession <clears throat> So oh, coming back to, I told you, know, this is a long term tariff, uh, long term tariff contract. It's called LTTC. So the, all the customers who are loading at least 1 million tons per track per annum, who have earlier in the previous year, if they load 1 million, then they're eligible for this LTTC concession. What is this LTTC concession? That is called long term tariff. So that will be a, they'll enter into a contract with railways for a long term. That is for three years or for five years, but not more than five years. So the customer entering into the agreement with the railways under the scheme shall provide minimum guaranteed gross freight revenue with a commitment to increase the freight revenue from the existing level. So a customer who wants to load the customer, he said, okay, well, my 10 million ton load karunga. So mujhe concession diya. So that will, the customer said, I load minimum 10 million tons, I will load. From next year onwards, I'm going to increase 5%, 5%, 5%. You please give me concession. That is called minimum guaranteed gross freight, MGGFR. So this minimum guarantee you will give that he is going to load this much of freight. But the condition is this MGFR should increase minimum 5% annually. Every year, it should be 5% that should increase. And that will be the benchmark for this, for this customer. That means MGFR first year should be at least 5% more than the AGFR of the previous 12 months. The MGFR second year and third year should be at least 5% more than the MGF the so it should be more five percent more than the preceding year. For calculating AGFR, either freight receipt and outward customer or some of inward customer, so outward or outward or both outward inward can be considered for considering actual gross freight revenue. So what is the percentage? The percentage of rebate shall be based on the incremental growth in AGFR over and above the benchmark. So whatever the incremental, that means how much he has loaded over the benchmark, which is fixed to him. Then that over and above, suppose he has loaded, say, 100 crores and the benchmark fixed, uh, suppose he has loaded 100, 105 crores, the benchmark fixed is 100 crores. Then that 5%, 5 crores, which is he has loaded more above the benchmark, he is eligible for concession. That rebate will be, he is eligible for that rebate. So what is that the customer is getting benefited? What is the railway is getting benefited? Railway is nothing but this traffic is continuously increasing. So there will be 5%, 5% revenue. The, the passenger, the customer is giving a traffic commitment that is going to increase by 5% every year. So there's an assured traffic for railways, which is going to increase by 5%. And what is customer? The customer tries to load more and more above the benchmark. Suppose he has loaded this year 100 crores, next year will pay 105, Next year, he try, he'll try to load 110. Next year, 130 crores, something like that. So that he'll get, the more he loads, the more concession he'll get. Under this scheme, the customer shall be offered a fixed freight rate at as prevalent during the beginning of the each year of the agreement period. Increase in freight rates midway in a year shall not be passed on the customer for that year, for that period of the agreement period. So one more advantage is during the agreement period, when he's signing the agreement period, Suppose he signed the agreement period in 2021. So whenever the freight rates increase in 2021, that freight rates, increase of freight rates will not be applicable to this customer. That will not be passed on to the customer. So there will be, the rates will be fixed throughout the agreement year. That will be fixed. That will not be increased. So that is the advantage. The change will be effective from the beginning of the next year. So the, from next year onwards, the increased rates will be there. However, the imp impact of the freight Increase of the, the MGR, MGGFR and BGF, BGGFR will be adjusted. Apart from this incremental rebate also, in case he is retaining the traffic, suppose he is loading 100 million and he is continuing to say, yeah, he, is, he is trying to re retain that 100 million, 
100 million tons for the five years, even then also he, is, he will be given some kind of concession so that the customer will not run away. So that for retention of the traffic which he has promised, for that also rebate is offered. Under this policy, the rebate shall also be granted on retention of traffic at the same level as in the previous, previous year's AGFR. The companies who are already carrying very, very high volume of traffic on rail and offering huge amount of gross freight revenue, a certain percentage of rebate shall also be offered to such companies on absolute GFR offered by them for retention. So whenever they retain the same amount of traffic, then certain amount of rebate also is offered to the customer. So that is clear, LDDC. You please note down whatever doubts are there can be clear. So I have, I have covered LTDC, I have covered STS also, station to station rates. Then coming through liberal, as, you, as we discussed in the earlier side, I said the wagons now in Indian railways, we have shortage of wagons. So we have the market, but we are not able to move. So what is the solution for it? We are trying to offer them concessions, incentives also to try to move this traffic. But where are the wagons? So buying wagons is very difficult, it's very costly affair for the so railways has to invert huge thousands of crores to buy the wagons. We are trying to replace the wagons under DF, under the depreciated reserve on DRF, but the cost involvement is very huge. So in order to encourage the private company to have their own wagons, the railway board has introduced this scheme called LSFTO, that is Liberalized Special Freight Train Operated Scheme. So what is the scheme? Under this scheme, minimum one rake should be procured by the customer and it will be operated in the approved circuits only. It cannot go all over the Indian railways, it cannot roam. It will be operated on the approved circuits. The customer says he wants to load this particular commodity from point A to B and point B to C, again from point C to D and from D to A. So this circuits is going to give us that, that should be approved a railway board and these rakes, this LSFTO rakes will be moving under that approved circuits only. However, the customer is permitted to access, he can also access the railway own good shed or private firm PFTs also. To apply to railway board for procurement of rake. On receipt of referral from railway board, agreement to be entered within six months. So, but for procurement of rake, he has to approach railway board. After a railway board's approval, he has to enter into agreement with the zonal railway within six months. And within two years, he has to procure the rake. So see, within six months, he has to enter the agreement. And within two years, he has to procure the rake. Maintenance of wagons will be undertaken by Indian railways at railway's own cost. In LSFTO, as I told you earlier, 12% rebate is given for 20, 20 years. So 20 years, he will be given freight rebate of 12%. So this, this may be an objective question for you. So under LSFTO, dash a rebate is given for dash years. Then you would say 12 years for 20 years. 12% 12, 12 for 20 years. In case of high capacity wagons, so high capacity wagons of 25 tons axle load, more capacity wagons, additional freight rebate of 2% may be granted, provided the rupee of the stake is about 10% the normal. So additional freight rebate of 2% is given, if the throughput of the wagon is about 20%, 10% normal rate. So in under this scheme, the customer has can apply on online only. He not come to the railway board and sit there and apply. No, he can apply on the freight business development. I think you're all aware. Now railway board has launched this new portal called the freight business development portal under which the customer can apply to various schemes online only that are going to come. You can also see this on Indian Railway website, www.indianrailways.gov.in. You can find this private business development portal. For procurement of special purpose of wagons, and, and you should address to EDFM, Exude Director Private Marketing or CISO of the Pencil Railway. On receipt of application and verification documents, Railway Board approves for procurement of rakes. The rakes procured through wagon leasing company or from manufacturers. On receipt of the application party and verification documents, Railway Board approves the procurement rakes, they can either purchase from the wagon leasing, wagon uh, from the manufacturers, or they can lease from the wagon leasing company. 
after 40 minutes of breaks, an agreement is executed between the customer and railways and notice is issued mentioning the closed circuits, wagon numbers, percentage of concession, period of concession, other valid relevance. So after 40 minutes of breaks, an agreement is executed. So in South Central, as I told, about 14 breaks we have, 13 and 1 break also. So 14 breaks we have in this special purpose uh, wagons under LSFTO. We have one break now. And one more rake we have inducted, inducted uh, lately, Altratech, Kalpuri Cements also is running one rake. Altratech also is purchased one rake. This agreement is valid for 35 years or till the period of rakes are operational, whichever is earlier. On completion of 20 years, the flight will be cut with our But as I told you, flight concession is only for 20 years. How much is the percent of concession? 12%. 12% concession for 20 years. So what will happen after 20 years? Because the quarter life the agreement is 35 years. So after 20 years, we are not going to give any concession. It will run on normal flight only. That is about the LSFTO. <clears throat> Coming to India on load scheme. So I, I told you earlier also, we have a scheme called EOL scheme. So that was issued by FM5 of 2013. Under this scheme, what is this scheme? The objective scheme is to improve the utilization of rolling stock and help the customer in prompt clearance of right train from that siding and terminals because normally from the freight from this terminals and all it's very difficult for them to clear so when they enter into evo oil so their freight will be cleared promptly because the engine is attached to the rake the engine will not be removed and railway what is the railway gain the utilization of rolling stock the rolling stock the turn around wagon turn around the rake turn on will improve because it will immediately be taken out from the siding under evo oil operations the train engine will remain available during loading and unloading operation deciding and wait on railway's account so as to work the train immediately after loading and unloading operations completed. So under this scheme, the train engine will remain throughout the loading and unloading. The train engine will be, remain along the rake. The siding owners will be required to offer evil operations under an agreement with zonal railways. But the siding owner has to enter into an agreement with the zonal railways and free time for loading and unloading will be lower than the normal but the free time will be lower than the normal free time. So instead of nine hours, it will be three hours. So what is the benefit to the customer? The customer are exempted from engine charges such as engine use by siding within the free time of loading. So within the free time, suppose the customer wants to use this engine for his own shunting purpose, then he need not pay any engine hire charges. Next is, he is exempt of siding charges. So again, he is also exempt of staff cost also. Staff cost also is not paid. So all these are benefits for the customer. There's no cost of railway stop and siding. So EOL scheme also, I'm just trying to explain in brief only because of the examination point of view, Detailed explanation we may not require unless it is an essay question. Uh, if uh, I'm I'm trying to explain to you detail on the incentive schemes, but these other schemes I'm trying to just explain to you briefly. And another scheme is called AFPO. AFPO means automobile freight train operator scheme. So you can see, you might have you might have seen that uh, in the trains the flat wagons uh, cars. Uh, lorries or tractors, they, they are moving on a specialized flat wagons. And uh, these are the, to, to move this automobile traffic, this scheme is introduced for the private parties to purchase his own rakes and to move their auto, especially that is for Maruti, uh, Hyundai, they all purchase these rakes and they are trying to move these passenger cars, Mahindra also. Automobile traffic includes passenger cars, two-wheeler, three-wheeler, mini trucks, tractors, chases, shells of cars, automobiles moved in lockdown condition. So these all uh, are there in all this traffic can be moved in this special type of uh, rigs that is called automobile flight train operator scheme. AF2 has to inject minimum three rigs, shall operate from base terminal and for this base a depot for wagon maintenance being operated. These wagons are maintained by Indian railways. So wagons are maintained by Indian railways but minimum he has to purchase three rakes. But there is no defined circuit in this. This AF2 train is proved to move over all Indian railway system, all over the Indian railway system it can move. This agreement is valid for 20 years. 
the freight rates are notified from time to time. As I told you, the freight rate concessions are notified from time to time, basing on the need for there is notified by railway board for the specific stock type for such traffic moving in automobile rates. So for the specific stock type, these freight rates are notified railway board from time to time. Agreement is valid for 20 years. Even if one wagon is loaded, full rake should be charged as loaded. So I cannot say, sir, one load or one load was, so all the rake charge not charge. No, he has to. He will be charged even though one rake is loaded, one wagon is loaded. After fully loaded run with automobiles, back loading shall be permitted with automobile verticals, auto hand slaves, and auto spare parts at per wagon load rates for BCAC BM wagons. For these BCAC wagons, back loading is permitted. So out of these automobiles are uh, lo uh, lo unloaded. This auto ancillary parts can be spare parts can be backloaded at the rates for wagon load rates for BCAC and lesser rates. It's private freight terminals. So this PFT is what are PFTs? PFTs are private freight terminals. So what is private freight terminals? This is issued by 2014 and relevant is issued that TMC. Terminal management company is solely responsible for ownership land, lease, license, or any other arrangement under the, which private land is proposed to be used for PFT. So the party can have his own land. He can develop his own land, own siding. It's not a siding. It is a, it is a type of siding, but it is called PFT, private freight terminals. True estate and cantage facility should be provided by the customer. Cost of commercial stop, such as one stop, Per shift will be born. So on, under this TMC, under this PFT policy, one, one cost stop will be on by the cost of one stop will be borne by the company. Crew and resting, crew resting and canteen facility provided, and it has to give its own land, it has to lay its own lines. And this PFT would be permitted to book and handle all traffic, excluding coal and coke under C priority. Outward loading of coal and coke under day priority is allowed. However, PFTs will be permitted to handle outboard iron ore or iron pellets from PFTs on payment of additional fee of so iron ore iron pellets only on five roads and above the PFT they can only permitted. But he is permitted to book all track of traffic except C C priority code. All types of wagons, parcel vans, containers, privately owned wagons are allowed to operate in this PFTs. The freight book from PFT is prepaid and all the commercial operating rules, including free time is applicable. And so the freight should be prepaid and all the goods rules will be applicable. Freight and haulage charges of private book from PFT shall be charged on through distance basis. PFT has to install its own in motion way bridge. So maintenance of track portion within the railway boundary from the decor point shall be borne by the TMC. So within the railway boundary, within the railway boundary, the track portion maintenance shall be done by the PFT. The cost will be borne by the customer only. But in the recent railroad circular, they have clarified that if the customer wants to maintain themselves, they can give in writing, they can maintain themselves also. Conversion charges of concerned booked at the PFTs are refunded and is successful. So this is what advantage is for PFT owners, these terminal charges are refunded back. So this, this is this will go back to the customer. 20 rupees per ton, but both outward and inward, 20 rupees outward, 20 rupees inward. So this terminal charges are refunded back to the customer. So suppose 42 wagons are there, 42 into 20 rupees, almost 84,000 rupees is per rake, he is going to get refunded back, terminal charges, which are levied will be removed. But so siding fellow will not get that benefit, only PFT. General purpose wagon scheme. So there's again, apart from the LSFTO and AFTO, one more scheme for the purchase of wagon that is called general purpose wagons. This scheme on South Central Railway we didn't purchase any, any uh, wagons, but on certain railways, they have purchased these wagons under GPWS. What is GPI, GPWS? General Purpose Wagon Investment Scheme. So uh, wagons which can, can carry multiple commodities without any specific approval from railway board, like Boxen, Boxen, Box, Boxen, BCN, they're all called general purpose wagons. So any specific approval is not required. Special type wagons, Kadevi. These are only box, boxen and BCN wagons. So the period of agreement for each rake will be the total life of specific stock. So the specific stock, suppose BCN is 35 years, the agreement could also be for 35 years. Party has to run minimum one rake 
with four person spades and brake van. So minimum one rake he has to load. In case of AFTO, three rakes he has to purchase. In case of a JPWS, one rake given. The rakes inducted shall not be merged in IR pools or wagons and will be distinctly indicated through a colored scheme. So rakes purchased under GPWS will have a separate color. It will not be merged with IR pool or wagons. Maintenance of wagons will be undertaken by IR on payment as per the agreement. So maintenance will be undertaken, but party has to pay. Based on the commodity flows, various zonal railways will be clubbed into groups for each type of rolling stock. But the catch here is, based on the empty flow only, the commodity flow, the zonal railways are clubbed to form, to, to study this empty run ratio. So the empty return ratio, the empty return ratio, what is stock originating and terminating within such group of zones would be calculated and then only those circuits will be approved where the ERR is at par or better. And where the ERR is less, the empty return ratio, wherever the circuits, whenever the, wherever this empty return ratio is less in the circuits, then only, there only this GPWF scheme is permitted. So this empty return ratio will should be less than the benchmark of your set group of zones. So this, this certain zones are grouped and this zoom and the empty return ratio is calculated in that zone, in that group of zones. And wherever this empty return ratio is less only, there only GPWS is rakes under GPS can be purchased. The basic idea is where there is empty flow. So instead of running this uh, loaded, uh, this rakes and empty flow, railways want to radio, want to uh, discourage and their own wagons, they want to, the parties, private party wagons to run under this scheme and the particular circuits. The rakes per procured will operate between private sub terminals or PFTs or inland content depots or mines to handle traffic on a GPS and users must have tie up with such private terminals, PFTs and so So the rakes can be moved between private sidings or PFTs or content depots or ports or, mine or mines, but they should have an agreement tie up with them with such PFTs. But in case of LSFTPO, only certain approved circuits, only the rakes can move. Here the rakes can move only in anywhere between PFTs, sidings, container depots, ports or mines. But in case of LSFTPO, only approved circuit. In case of AFTO, they can run anywhere. They can also operate in railway good shed subject to operational feasibility and payment of terminal access charge, demolition, ground leasing charge. So they can also operate from Bullshit also, but the uh, thermal access charges that they pay. The thermal access charges is nothing but the, we, are, we are charging them about 160,000 1, per rake to access the thermal charges. A rebate of 10% uh, shall be given on base fare for each loaded wagon. Such rebate shall be, however, be orderly for 15 years, subject to cap of rates. So 10% rebate is given for 15 years. In case of G previous, in case of LSFTO, 12% rebate for 20 years. In case of AFTO, the rebate is prescribed by railway board. In case of G previous, 10% rebate is given for 15 years. So this is all you should remember. Apart from this, few more concessions are uh, discounts are given. Now, as you all know, that busy season such as 15% is drawn from 1st October 2019. So this is also a possible question, uh, objective question. So from, from when this busy season such as is withdrawn, which is say from 1st October 2019. Long lead concession of 15% to 20% is granted to coal, iron ore and finished steel. So long lead concession also is given from ranging from 15 to 20% coal, iron ore and finished. you might have seen by earlier slides that all concessions are eligible, are, uh, are, uh, are given to all commodities except coal, iron ore and steel. But now this long lead concession is extended to coal, even to coal also, coal, iron ore and steel. That is 15 to 20%. So coal and coke, if you load more than 1400 meters, 20% concession is given. Iron and steel, if you load more than 1600 kilometers, 20% concession is given. Iron ore, if you load from 1500 kilometers, 15%. If you load more than 1500 kilometers, 20 percent concession. This is called long lead concession. Earlier, we have seen long lead concession to the clinker traffic. That is, if the low, if he loads more than 1000 kilometers, then concession 20 percent concession is given. But here for coal, iron ore, and finished steel, 15 to 20 percent, basing on the commodity, this concession is given. Coal, 
20% for more than 400 kilometers, iron steel 20% for more than 600 kilometers, iron ore 20% <coughs> for more than 1500 kilometers, 15% for 700 to 1500 kilometers. So please try to remember this. Under the scheme called a short lead concession of 10%, 50% is granted on all traffic except coal and iron ore. That is up to 100 kilometers. If, if support, because the short lead, con, what we have done is uh, we have analyzed and found that the short lead, that is the traffic moving within 100 kilometers, railway, they are not coming to rail. They are all, all the traffic, especially cement traffic, they are all going by road only, almost 70, 80% also. So in order to attract the short lead traffic back to rail, railway board has given this concession. That is called short lead concession. What is short lead concession? Zero to 50 kilometers, if they load 50% concession straight away. 51 to 75 kilometers, 25% concession. 76 to 90 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 10%. Up to 100 kilometers, 10% concession is given. So this percent of concession you can see. So when the customer loads up to 100 kilometers, short lead traffic, this 10 to 50% concession is given. That is called short lead concession. Next is terminal access charge concession. So for group three stations, as I told you earlier, whenever a customer comes to load from the from the goods sheds, concession is given. But, but uh, uh, terminal access charge is levied. That is, I told you, 160,000 rupees. But for the train container train, container train operators, for the containers, Concord especially, we have given, we have we told them, railway has told that a 50% concession is given to them. That means only 80,000 is charged whenever they access our goods sheds, only 80,000 rupees is charged as terminal access charges. And container automobile traffic, the example for payment of state charge is the example up to 31st October. 5%, 25% discount on haulage charges loaded and empty containers. Now we are giving concession 25%, 20% for discount on haulage charges. Concession to, as I told you earlier, five to load fly ash and industrial salt, 40% concession is given now. So these are all different type of concessions. So uh, the railway board has taken uh, again. Uh, to ease the doing of business, I'm just I made a uh, this thing, uh, some some kind of uh, data. I have uh, tried to import this slide. We can go through this slide because time is running out now, almost 4:21. So five ten minutes, we'll uh, just uh, uh, we'll try to uh, leave it for the doubts clearing session, so that uh, you will be uh, uh, pakka for this uh, information point of view. Uh, I can clear all your doubts. This uh, to ease this uh, uh, doing because unless we is our doing business with the customers is very difficult because they find railways in private in private firms you find the customer can do the business very easily so for the customer to earlier what happened for the customer to come to railways he has to go to the goods shed take out the forwarding note <coughs> fill up the forwarding note submit to the uh, cgsr or the station master then the cgsr will check the freight and he will say this much of freight is there you please pay and he has to go to the bank take out a DD, then he has to again come back to the goat shed or the station master, then again he has to pay the freight, then he has to register himself in the end and then, and, and he'll be given a priority, then after priority, then he has to wait for his turn for the rake, then after loading, then he does not know when does, he, when does it reach his destination, he does not know when, when it goes to the destination, he does not know how to track and all. So this is kind of hiccups over there for the customer because the customer is facing difficulty, in order to do ease this kind of business, railway board has introduced slew of slew of measures that you can find all these things in the private business business development portal. Now the customer did not come to the good shed, he did not come to the station master. He can only sit at home, register himself. That is called electronic registration. He'll get the RR also on electronically on his mobile, uh, on his on his email, and he can fill up the forwarding note right sitting uh, at home also at his desktop, he can sit, he can get his, he can register himself, he can uh, pay the uh, freight also online through NFP or something like that. He can move his rake and he can also track his rake on online. He know what uh, that uh, through his FNR number, he'll know where the rake is going. He can know when it's going to reach destination and he can also pass us the RR destination to the consignee and the consignee also can show the ETR uh, that OTP to the um, CGSR then he can also take delivery there. So all this, now the doing a business has become very, very easy. Now he will not take DD also. Now he can pay through SBI gateway 
we can go through NFT. Like how we are transacting through, how we are uh, trying to uh, purchase an Amazon, you want to purchase or you want to uh, book something uh, online, you can easily book it online through your payment gateway through ICIC bank. Suppose you have ICIC bank, you can easily pay, not uh, take the money, go to the uh, shop and again pay there, again you take a receipt and all. No. So likewise also, railways also, they have streamlined this booking through this right business portal. The customer can stay, sit in his office and he can do all the booking. He can, he can on booking, payment, tracking and delivery also. So all these are now very much streamlined. So you can pay through this NFT, you can pay the debit card, credit card, RTGS, all this can, can be done. So this I put in a slide, you can just go through this. As I told you, this right business portal is developed. You can please go through this, wherein the customer can uh, register on the wagon against electronic 3RD. He can uh, have this ETRR earlier, he, can, he should get his physical copy. Now electronic transfer ETRR is now generated and the, in, the online interface for the customer is very much available now. So all these things are there. Uh, you can go through slides, the BD rakes, I've told you two point combination rakes. Now, uh, railways have reduced the train load went with BCNHL rakes, at least 50 cent wagons. Now they made 42 wagons only. You can load very easily. If you want 42 wagons, you can get the train load benefit. And uh, all this uh, pet pork uh, PCC also reduced now from 68 tons to 60 tons. All these incentives are given to the customers now to enhance the loading. Again, this alternate boot sheds. Alternate boot sheds are also developed now in uh, when uh, so to uh, to decongest this uh, busy busy boot sheds. Now the customer, if he loads to the alternate boot sheds, the thermal charges are not levied when the customer low books to this or load from this alternate boot sheds to decongest the busy busy boot sheds. This this alternate boot sheds are now notified by railway board. Wherein, if he loads, the terminal ch terminal charges are not levied on these customers. On South Central, we are suppose Karimnagar is a, is a busy good, busy season good, busy good shed. The alternate good sheds are Sultanabad, Lingapet, Jagatal, Gangajara. Like with Nizambad, we have three alternate good sheds, Kamadi, Bodhan, Dich. This, for example, just for example, when the busy season good sheds are there, when we notify alternate good sheds to decongest the busy season good sheds, alternate good sheds are given, or the customer is not charged terminal charges, but also given extra free time also. This one more scheme increased by railway. So all these are just a summary. You can go through this. A debit bar, debit trade system also is now introduced uh, because they've been complaining that uh, heavy damage is being levied. Now debit trade system also is introduced, wherein if a customer in a month, if he loads, if it, if it takes more time, that means he accumulates more, suppose, it, suppose the free time is nine hours. Uh, suppose he, he loads in 11 hours. That means two hours we should debit him actually. He has to pay damage for two hours. But in a month, suppose instead of uh, free time of nine hours, instead of completing by nine hours, he completes in six hours only. Then a credit of three hours is given to him. So this two hours earlier, which has been debited to him, will be credit for three hours. So at the end of the month, we'll see how much debit hours and how much credit hours are there. If credit, then we are not going to levy, we're going to adjust from the debit hours to the credit from the credit hours to the debit hours so that demerit will not be levied so that customer also will try to improve his uh, uh, loading unloading and railways also will try to improve the turnaround that is the purpose so that is also a new measure debit credit system is introduced our we have almost uh, 26 uh, 20 22 customers on south central railway availing this debit uh, debit credit system give me a minute also is there the customer wants load he wants to have a rake quickly, then 15% premium, the normal tariff he has to pay, then he'll be rake is supplied. Correct, on the on the date only, on the indicated date, his rake will be directed supplied. 15% then normal tariff he has to pay extra. The speed of freight trains is almost double, concession discount, decongestion. So these are all the measures which have been taken by railways to attract more traffic. So boot shed development also has taken place. This also you may not require, but just for you, for, for you to have extra information, 
have just given this uh, development of boot sheds. Now that is uh, because the railway board is very much particular and, uh, and the Honorable MR especially is insisting that we have to improve our boot shed for us to give better facility to customer to improve our traffic. We have to develop this boot shed. So I put this slide. You can later on go on. You read what is ground feed, what is boot shed, what is the tenure. This all I put. You can go through this. So this is, this is about boot, development of boot shed to private investment. The private participant can come and invest and our existing uh, boot shed you can develop or you can develop a new boot shed. For that, some incentive is given. Is given. I, am, uh, I have described everything in the slides. We can just run through this. And round the clock working earlier, it was uh, GM uh, was empowered. Now DRMs have been dedicated power to introduce round the clock. So DRMs can introduce round the clock wherever possible to improve the turnaround and to for early clearance of the breaks. So thank you. This is uh, what uh, I was trying to say. So I have covered extensively about the freight incentive schemes. I have given you in detail about uh, various freight incentive schemes, how they are, how Indian Railways performance is there and how and what is the necessity for uh, improving this freight traffic and what are the different incentive schemes are available and what are the different concessions and what are the different uh, periods which is available. All this I've given. The slides, hope the slides will be useful from the examination point of view. Now I request any doubts are there, you can please ask me so that I can clear the doubts both in Hindi and English also. Thank you. Now please raise the hand so that I will admit the... Uh, Mr. Ajay Singh, please admit. Uh, sir, namaste. Uh, sir, ground uses charges and stabling charges, kya hota hai, sir? हाँ ground ये charges stability charges एक ही होता है जब भी customer ने आपने good share के पास आता है तो उस, उसको ज़्यादा quantity suppose ये clinker है suppose एक iron ore है iron chips है उसके पास तो एक ही बार अने आपने आप immediate break जैसे supply होता है load नहीं कर सकता है तो वो पूछेगा सर हमारा आपका good share का area जो है हम आके हम dump कर लेंगे उधर dump करने से आप माल को इकट्ठा करेंगे इकट्ठा करने के बाद हम जो भी उसका चार्जेस है हम पे करेंगे उसका तो डेट इस कॉल्ड ग्राउंड यूज़ है चार्जेस स्टेबलिंग चार्जेस पर स्टेबलिंग चार्जेस जैसा होता है कि रेक जैसा आप प्राइवेट एस्पेशियली प्राइवेट रेक जो होता है कंडर रेक्स फॉर एग्जांपल है तो उनका साइडिंग में वो ले नहीं he is stuck in our station. So he cannot block our station. Right? So he can't block our station. So for that, if you take a break for their siding, we will take a penalty. We call it as stabling charges. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, you have asked about the box and 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 box. हाँ भी अभी उसका आपको फ्राइड मार्केटिंग सर्कलर है जैसा जैसे रेलवे बोर्ड वेबसाइट मिलेगा आपको मास्टर सर्कलर है उसमें देख लीजिए बैक्सन क्या होता है बीसी नहीं होता क्या होता है उनका कैरिंग कैपेसिटी क्या होता है स्टैंडर्ड एक पे कितना एडजस्ट करना उसको पूरा डिस्कवर कर चुका है डेट � अभी किसी के doubts हैं? या मिस्टर राजू प्लीज अमित मिस्टर राजू प्लीज अमित मिस्टर राजू प्लीज अमित सर सम क्वेरीज इन द चार्ट बॉक्स सर सर कैन आई रीड आउट और what is the meaning of given delivery short of the destination? Uh, uh, delivery short of destination is suppose a customer hai, so suppose he is not able to take delivery at his original point. So point A say rake move the point B ko. Suppose he is not able to take delivery at the point B, he says 
डिलीवरी का पहले डिलीवरी डेस्टिनेशन स्टेज का पहले कि इफ यू वांट्स टू टेक डिलीवरी बिफोर द एक्चुअल डेस्टिनेशन स्टेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड डिलीवरी शॉर्ट ऑफ डेस्टिनेशन दैट मींस नॉट द डेस्टिनेशन स्टेशन जस्ट शॉर्ट ऑफ द डेस्टिनेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड डिलीवरी शॉर्ट ऑफ डेस्टिनेशन शंटिंग चार्जेस shunting charges shunting is nothing but shunting charges are levied for the rake suppose ye jaisa i told you the every siding almost is are uh, notified on through this expenses ek hota hai ek siding charge hota hai ek hai shunting charge hota hai siding charge jaisa hota hai jaisa if it is not notified through this expenses the 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 uh, the uh, rake which is uh, moved from the Uh, from uh, from the uh, common point handing over uh, point bolta hai common point bolta from the, from the common point to the inside the siding so whatever distance is there and uh, we levy siding charges because the the siding is not notified on through distance basis but shunting charge hota hai in case uh, apna engine ko they want to use that engine apne siding mein अपना रेक्स के लिए शंटिंग के लिए यूज होता है देन वी लेवी शंटिंग चार्जेस टू दैम बिकॉज आवर इंजन इज देयर इनसाइड दी साइडिंग तो उन लोग का फॉर्मेशन के लिए उधर अगर समझो एक एक साइडिंग में चार पांच लाइन है तो चार पांच लाइन को वो रेक को अलग अलग पार्ट बना के वो चार पांच साइडिंग में लगाने के लिए अपना इंजन यूज करता है उनका इंजन है अपना इंजन यूज करता है देन वी अपन इंजन उनको देता है और शंटिंग चार्जेस we levy shunting charges for them to place this wagons inside the spurs of the siding usko shunting charge batate hain there are no further doubts i think we'll wind up the session on behalf of pilipam chikindrabad i thank sri dr christopher sir for taking the session on great incentive and also clearing many doubts thank you sir thank you so much